Hey up folks, welcome to Son of Dell's live vlog on the 24th of May. It's been exactly three weeks since I've done a vlog. Um, bits and bobs have been happening in the meantime. Uh, I've been not too bad, you know, bits and bobs. Uh, all I'm going to say is tonight's vlog contains a couple of book reviews, a couple of gifts which I've had, one that I've had bought for me, one I bought myself. My Jigsaw subscription box, which is even better than I thought it would be. And I'll be doing a bit of talking, first of all, about Liverpool FC, who obviously I absolutely love, but it'll be the good and the bad side of supporting Liverpool FC. And I'll be basically having a bit of a talk about life in general. So, all that coming up. First of all, the unboxing for the Jigsaw for the Gibson subscription. <laughs> So I um, joined the Gibson subscription, as I told you on my previous vlog, um, because they were doing a really good offer where you get a thousand piece jigsaw and sometimes they can be limited edition jigsaws, sometimes they can be signed puzzles. Well, I got the very first one. Now the first one is this one and it's called Garden Life. Now I got the jigsaw and I looked at the picture and I thought it looks rather cool. And if you look on the back, it looks cool as well. But what I didn't notice was this right in the corner. It's actually signed by the artist. And the artist is Bethany Lord, and she actually signed the very first Jigsaw. So I think if that's a sign of things to come, I'm going to be very, very happy with this Jigsaw subscription. Now, as you've noticed, I haven't got a Jigsaw gallery. That's because I haven't done any Jigsaws. Well, technically I have. I was doing a really nice one, a thousand piece one of a Zodiac. Really, really good it was. Got tar uh, sorry, tarot cards. It got tarot cards all on it and all different meanings and stuff like that. And I was about 150 pieces away from finishing it when I went to bed. I got up the next morning, came downstairs, and the lot was scattered all over the kitchen floor. We haven't got a clue how, we haven't got a clue what's done it and when, but literally overnight my jigsaw went from being on the table to being all over the kitchen floor. Now we do have a dog, but our dog is old, as in 13 plus. And she hasn't even got the energy to put her nose on top of the table, let alone get my jigsaw and pull it onto the floor. Now, we are absolutely baffled, and it literally was in pieces. I couldn't, do, I wasn't going to do it again. It had just taken me three days to get that far on it, because I'd not been really in the frame for doing jigsaws. But I decided I would get this tarot one done. And obviously, something happened in the middle of the night that I do not know about. I wish I did know about it, but the entire jigsaw was off this table here behind me and it was all on the floor down, down there behind my chair. I got up and there, wasn't, there was about four pieces left on the table, all the rest were on the floor. Now it hadn't been chewed, it hadn't been scratched, there was no marks on any of the pieces, it looked as good as when it was on the jigsaw table, but it ended up on the floor and I don't know why. Now I will be doing some jigsaws um, in the next couple of weeks, so you will be getting some more on my vlogs. But for this month, it's the Jigsaw subscription. And as you can see, sorry, I meant to show you a bit more detail, actually. As you can see, there's basically, it's garden life. All the different things people get up to in their garden. And some lovely colours in it. Look at the colours in that. Yellows, blues, pinks, all sorts. I'm really looking forward to doing that. That'll be a cracking Jigsaw to do. So that's the Gibson subscription service. And I think it works out to something like, if you have a 12-month subscription, it works out something like £12 something a month. twelve twenty four a month, I think it is. And for that, you get a 1,000-piece jigsaw. And like I said, my very first one has been signed by the artist. So there you go. That's the Gibson subscription for April, May. That's it. can be months then for May. Now, I've been um, doing a lot of reading just lately and also buying myself little bits and bobs. Now, in case people are thinking, God, you buy yourself a lot of stuff. Yes, I do, it's very true, but I get a lot of my stuff using Amazon vouchers from doing surveys. I've been doing surveys for about 12, 13 years now, and I've, I've literally been able to buy almost everything that I've got, the CD or a book, or even stuff for the kitchen and the house, and even presents I buy for Deb. A lot of them are because I've earned them doing survey vouchers. Now, this was one that Deb got me. Now, I'm a big Stephen King fan, and I just read a book called If It Bleeds, and it was a really, really good book, which I'll be doing a review for a bit later on. Now, this one is called The Institute. Now, oops, sorry. No, it isn't. 
That was a faux pas, wasn't it? This one is called The Outsider. The one I've ordered is called The Institute. It should be here tomorrow. But this one is called The Outsider. Now, what I like about it is this is not your typical horror book. This is more like a detective scene. But when I read the back, it says, A horrifying crime, watertight evidence points to a single suspect, except he was 70 miles away with an ironclad alibi. Detective Anderson sets out to investigate the impossible. How can the suspect have been both at the scene of the crime and in another town? And it intrigues me, because with Stephen King, you never get a straightforward story, so there's going to be plot twists and everything. As you can see, it's a thick book. It's a really thick book. It's going to be, what, how many pages? Let me just see. It's 475 pages, you know, so it's going to be a really good read, that is. And at the moment, obviously, I'm reading, I'm, I'm alternating between a couple on Kindle and a couple of books so that I'm alternating between them because I've got so many books to read, it's unreal. But that is the one that Deb got for me, and it's called The Outsider. Now, there is another one in the same series called uh, The Institute, and I've got that one coming tomorrow. So, that's The Outsider. Another thing that Deb bought for me, um, it's a brickhead figure. Now, as you know, I love me brickheads. I've got tons and tons of brickheads. I don't think I showed you this on my last vlog, but if I did, then it's me suffering with dementia or something or other. I don't know. Maybe it's me age of 50 and it's creeping up on me. But this one is absolutely brilliant. I think I might have shown it you, actually. You've got Stuart, you've got Gru, and you've got Otto. I think I might have shown you this already. My brain's frazzled. Just ignore me. It's been a strange couple of weeks. But yeah, so that I've got to look forward to. And as you can see on the back, there's quite a few that you can actually collect of the brickheads. And I'm mental on brickhead figures anyway. So that was that. Now, something else which I bought for myself was um, there's been a series that's been on over the last few years that people have been raving about and I've been wanting to see it. But rather than watching an episode at a time, a series at a time, I waited till it had been completed and then I bought the box set. Now, if, you, if you've been living on another planet, you won't have heard of this series, but everybody else will have heard of this series. It's called Peaky Blinders, and it stars the brilliant Cillian Murphy. I think that's how you pronounce it, Cillian or Killian Murphy. Anyway, it stars him and Sam Neill, and it's a big box set, as you can see. All of it's there, it's complete, and it's on Blu-ray, and I'm really, really looking forward to it because I'm a massive fan of this kind of uh, genre, the sort of gangster but not modern gangster. And one of my favourites before watching this, because I haven't watched this yet, is a fantastic series called The Boardwalk Empire. And it stars Steve Buscemi. And it's another long series, but it is absolutely fantastic. And it's basically about Prohibition America and the gangs, basically, that, that ruled, that ruled the, 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 you know, the entire area of, of the boardwalk, basically. Um, and he plays um, Nuki Thompson, Enoch Thompson. But he's called Nucky, and N U C K Y before you get any dirty ideas. Nucky Thompson, and it's a fantastic series. And if you like your dark, gritty, good storyline, good characters, brilliant sets. I mean, on the box set which I which I've got, the uh, do behind the scenes and show you how they actually turn buildings into how they wanted them to look, and it's absolutely fantastic, honestly, because I love the behind the scenes of these things as well. Now. The last three weeks, what have I been doing? Because it's been three weeks since I've done a vlog. Now, I've had a couple of days where I've not been brilliant, to be honest with you. Um, I've not been feeling fantastic. I've been a bit low, a uh, bit a bit out of it. Um, I think this is my anxiety and stuff that kicks in. Uh, but other than that, we've spent a lot of time sitting outside, a lot of time in nature, if you like, sitting on the decking with the lovely weather and our brilliant neighbours, uh, Tony and Michelle. We spend a lot of time with them. They're fantastic. Um, we couldn't ask for better neighbours to be honest and even on the other side to be honest we've got Sue and Ricky and they are absolutely brilliant as well we've got some really really wonderful neighbours and I think that's something which people sometimes aren't lucky enough to get you'll move into a house and yes you might get on with one neighbour but the other one might be the neighbour from hell or both of them might be the neighbours from hell or the one across the road might be that we've been lucky because in this street with there's about 30 houses, but we all seem to get on really, really well. We're all there for each other, we look out for each other. I know so many people by first name terms, all up and down the street, not just my neighbours, I know across the road, up the top, I know down the bottom, I know around the corners, I know all of them, you know, because we get to talk to them. And we've actually met some people as well, because um, during the pandemic, we used to sit out at the back of our house, and we've got a decking that overlooks a cemetery, and people walk their dogs through there, 
and we made a lot of um, not friends exactly but we talked to people as they were walking the dogs because sometimes you'd look over and it'd be like the dog would be yapping at us and we'd have a laugh and all that sort of thing and I think sometimes a lot of uh, that's what people needed during the pandemic they just needed that somebody is there because just by saying hello just by looking over and saying hello it made some of these people's days and it made our day sometimes when we weren't feeling brilliant you know for somebody to shout up you who are you there are you all right yeah and, you know it, it showed that they were bothered and people were asking about us and uh, that's a really nice thing because I've, uh, before I get on to the main subject for my um, last word today um, which is the good and the bad of Liverpool FC I've noticed just lately that people seem to be so angry they seem to be so peed off at everything and they won't look at good things they will always look at the bad things they will always try and do bad things rather than saying look I want to make people smile for a change you know there's stabbings there's murders there's decapitations there's shootings in schools there's all sorts going on and you think to yourself what has made this world so angry and the only thing I can put it down to is literally it's people themselves because you could wake up with all the problems of the world on your shoulders, right? You might have a really terrible life where everything's going wrong, but that doesn't mean you're going to go and take it out on other people. If you're anything like me, when I was going through my problems, I kept them to myself. The only people who knew about them were, were the people who needed to know. And none of them ever thought, wow, God, he's changed, he's a bit psycho, you know, what's, got, what's happened with him? Because it didn't change me. Yes, sometimes I went quiet and sometimes, you know, I'd be sitting there and I'd just be away in a world of my own. But I was never angry at people. I never shouted at them. I never I had arguments with them or nothing because I kept it in, you see. I kept it inside. And by keeping it inside, I was able to process it better. Because if you're going to have a go at somebody and give them a load of grief, all you're basically doing is making them feel bad. So you're just going to keep making people feel bad. Then that person will do it and make somebody else feel bad. And it'll go on like a chain, it'll never end. And I just think it's easier, basically, to deal with it yourself. Yes, have a laugh with people, yes, talk about things, yeah, that's fine, but don't take it out on other people, your own problems. You can't, they, they're they not responsible for your problems. Yeah, so, have a think. But another thing, I don't uh, no, I showed you this, I think, last time. That was my Blu-ray. Mm, yeah, I showed you that me last time, my Blu-ray. Still haven't watched it yet. No time to die. Still haven't watched it. I've been watching the end of the football seasons, to be honest with you, um, and I've been enjoying it. I've watched all sorts. I've watched Italian football, French football, English football. I've watched a bit of Dutch football as well, and I've really been enjoying it. And the season's coming to a clo has come to a close now, so it's all over. But I'll go into more of that, like I say, at the end. But yeah, coming up, I've got two book reviews for you. Now, the first book I want to review is Stephen King's If It Bleeds. Now, If It Bleeds is a collection of four stories. Now, the first one was a very, very clever story because it was on the... It was a very clever story because of how it was done. It was modernised. Basically, you've got a man who... I won't go into too much detail, but he passes away. A phone's put in his pocket when he passes away. This lad rings him, and every time he rings him and he's in trouble, this person will either die or commit suicide or whatever and it basically is the story behind that so that was a good one the second one it took some figuring out and if you're not one of these people who thinks outside the box you won't enjoy it because you will not get your head around it it took a lot of me really thinking and thinking and thinking to figure out exactly how good the story was because at first I was putting it down and saying it was rubbish it was stupid it didn't make sense and then when I started thinking outside the box, it made a lot of sense. So I enjoyed that one. It's called something like, th uh, thank you for everything, Mr. Summit Such. 39 years, goodbye, Chuck, or something like that. Anyway, the third one is If It Bleeds. Now, If It Bleeds is obviously the title of the book. And it's a detective thing, but it's a detective thing with a difference. It's basically a woman and who runs an agency. Which I found, by the way, that this book I'm about to read, well, the one that I will be reading soon, is supposed to be before it. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that If It Bleeds had a, like, a sequel to it, if you like. But it's a standalone, don't get me wrong. But it does reference things that happened in the previous books. So 
if you're going to read If It Bleeds and you haven't read um, The Outsiders, and I think it's called The Institute, the other one, I can't remember. But if you haven't read that one, then you will struggle, really struggle. But it's a really, really good, clever story, and it's got Stephen King written all over it. It's very, very clever. Now, it ended with a story called The Rat, which was the fourth story in the book. And personally, I didn't like it. I thought it was very tongue-in-cheek. I thought it was very predictable. I thought it was a bit stupid in places, and I didn't really... I couldn't really give it a mark for that one. I couldn't. Now, when I did a review for it on Goodreads, I gave it three out of five. And at the time, it was because I didn't understand two. Numbers, I didn't understand story two. And number four, I just thought was a filly. Uh, but the more I've thought about it, I've realised that number two is actually a very, very, very clever story. And it actually plays on something that I've always had an idea in my head to write about. But I won't tell you about that in case I write about it. Uh, but, yeah, it's a clever story. Now, if I was giving it now... I would give it four out of five, that book. So if you're going to get If It Bleeds, Stephen King, I'll give it four out of five. The next book I want to give you a review is another Rebus novel, and it's Rebus book three, and it's called Tooth and Nail. And what I like about this one, again, it's Ian Rankin, in case you didn't know he wrote the Rebus novels. What I like about this one is he's taken... Uh, Rebus is actually based in Scotland. He's a Scottish detective. He's, you know, he's a Scottish policeman detective thing. So he's up there. But in this one, he's out of his depth because he has to go down to London to help with a case. Now, the only reason he's got out with this case is because when you've read book one, you'll see that they think he's an expert on serial killers. So there's a serial killer going around in London and he gets involved in the case. Now, of course, he's out of his depth. He can't understand what they're saying. They can't understand what he's saying because he's speaking, he's speaking Scotch, but he's, he's like a really um, deep Scotch, and they can't understand. They're kind of looking at him as if they say, yeah, whatever, what, don't know. But it's a really clever story. Um, good. It, it, it'll keep you guessing all the way to the end. I don't think you'll figure it out because I didn't. I didn't figure it out at all, and I'm normally quite okay with detective novels, but this was one that, no, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. I figured out what the character was and how they were, but I didn't know who the killer was. I hadn't got a clue. Now, again, like I said, it's dark, it's gritty. There's some bits in it some people might find offensive. You know, it's a bit rough in places, but it's a really good story. And I'm ready to read um, number four now. Uh, and I'll I'll give a reading, a rating of that one after. Now, again, this one was a, a good book by Ian Rankin, and I've give it four out of five. And four out of five for me means it's absolutely brilliant, but it it could have been better. Only slightly, but it could have been better. I just thought there was too much side story going on and too many characters that seemed to all know each other that you wouldn't have thought they would do. You know, everybody was connected, even though there was no connection. It was just too much. Yeah, it was too nicely done and, and you know, no, there was no real thought to go behind it once you figured out what was going on. So I'll give that one four out of five. Now, when I next review a book, I'm reviewing a fantastic book. And I didn't know about this book until I managed to get it off Kindle Library. And it's by Dean Koontz. Now, Dean Koontz is another one of my favourite authors. I've read loads from Hideaway to Funhouse to Light uh, Lightning to all of them. And this one is called 77 Shadow Street. Now, I'm reading it on Kindle at the moment, and it is massive. It is a huge book, because I'm on about 73% through it, and I've been reading it for about four or five days. And it's clever, because it's split into two books. And I'll explain more on my next vlog. But those are my ratings for If It Bleeds, 4 out of 5, and uh, Rebus Book 3, Tooth and Nail, 4 out of 5. Now, Liverpool, good and bad, you thinking, what is going on here? Right, Liverpool FC, fantastic team, supported them since I was five years old. I was, it was 1977 when I first started watching them on Match of the Day with my dad, when Match of the Day used to show live football on a Saturday. And I followed them. I followed them when they were brilliant and glorious and were winning everything. And I followed them when they couldn't even win a teacup. And I've still followed them. I've kept following them. 
I've never give up on them. I've never thought, oh, I'll switch my allegiance. I'm a Liverpool fan. I will be till the day I draw my last breath. And the good side of Liverpool is we've won two cups already. We've won the Carling Cup and we've won the FA Cup, beating Chelsea on penalties both times. We've come second in the Premier League by only one point. And while finishing twice, uh, finishing top in two cups, you would think we would have suffered in the Premier League, but we haven't. We finished second behind Manchester City. Congratulations to them. I hate them, but never mind. And we are in the Champions League final against Real Madrid this Saturday, which I don't think we'll win, if I'm being honest. I don't think we will. I think it's a bit too much with what we've been going through. So I think we might lose that, but we'll see. I could be wrong, and I'm a Liverpool fan. Now, I've also start, uh, finished my pin, bag, my pin badge collection. I've got ways for two more to come through, like I told you before. Once I've finished that, I'll film that for my one vlog in the, in the future, whenever I get these last two pin badges. And I've started collecting the um, player badges. Now, what I like about the player badges is basically you get a player badge like that. Right? Now, that particular one is midfielder Ian Callaghan, who played for Liverpool from 1960 to 1978. Right? 857 appearances, 68 goals. Right? And what you get, you also get a card. Not that, that's a letter. <laughs> you get a card, all about, you know, showing him. And then on the back, information about him uh when he made his date of birth place of birth height signed when he signed you know and all that sort of stuff what honors he's won and i've started that collection now so that'll be my next pin badge collection still all good so far isn't it and now we come to the bad side liverpool fc have bought out a new shirt for next year and we've won everything we've won quite a lot in the last few years now i would assume that would have meant the price would come down because uh, rewarding fan loyalty, basically. And I was shocked, completely shocked. Because I got an email off, off uh, LFC to go onto the store and I went on. And the brand new home kit, which is quite boring, I will be honest. I don't think there's much to it at all. Is £70 for a football shirt, right? And that's only the one that they wear in the stands. If you want the one that they wear on the pitch, it's £100. Now, there's no names on these, no numbers on these, no badges on these. You have to pay for all that lot separate. Now, what I don't like, well, from the prices you can tell, is the fact that we have supported that club when they were nothing, when they were literally scrimping and scraping to finish in the top ten. And we followed them when they were playing garbage, when they bought Dross, when they, you know, we couldn't win. We were losing at home to people like York City in the Cup. We lost to Lincoln City in the Cup one year as well, and we lose to these people, you know. Now, we started winning again. Now, because of that, they seem to think they can charge whatever they like for the shirts. Now, me for one, massive Liverpool fan, literally, won't touch their shirts now with the barge pole. Because I am not being held to ransom on a, on a football shirt. If they put that down to £40, they would sell 10 times more than what they will sell at 70 And the one for 100 is even more disgusting. Now, I got an email off JD Sports saying, don't buy from LFC, buy from us. I thought, right, they'll be knocking it down. No. The one that's 70 on the Liverpool store is 75 in JD Sports. And the one that's 100 is 115 in JD Sports. Now, how is that saving anything? How is that a bargain? How is that better than anything? Now, what I bought, and I'll show you what I bought. I bought three things off the Liverpool store, refusing to buy a shirt. They were, they were souvenirs of the 2022 win at the FA Cup. I bought myself a nice mug. You can see, up the reds. Emirates FA Cup final winners, 2022. Love that, it's got the team photo on it. Brilliant. All right, that was a tenner. That was a tenner, right? Put that away. Two more things. I'm a mad keyring fan, so I bought myself a Liverpool keyring. It's just a plain keyring. FA Cup winners. I think that was about three quid or three fifty or something like that. All right. So far, so good. And I bought myself. A hoodie. I'll show you the hoodie. Really nice hoodie, actually. As you can see, winners, FA Cup. And that was 35. Now, 35 quid for a hoodie is a good price because I usually pay about £30 for a standard hoodie. 
So 35 is a fantastic price and it's nice and big. It fits me brilliant. I've, I've even got a picture to show you at, at the end of the vlog and you'll be able to see me wearing it. So that was 35, the mug was 10. The thing was eight, uh, three, right? That's 48 pound. And I'd rather spend that on three items than pay 70 pound for one shirt or a hundred if you want wear the one that's on the pitch. Because, like I say, I refuse to let a football club skimp me. I'm not having it. And another thing, my friend, Dan, really good friend of ours, Daniel Carr, he said getting tickets for any of the matches was like ridiculous. It was pathetic, honestly. You couldn't get tickets full of the money for any of the matches. They were selling out as fast as they were doing them. And I just think to myself, why can't Liverpool just say, right, what we'll do to reward the fans' loyalty for one month only, we'll sell the shirts at 40 quid. 40 quid. And I tell you something, I'll bet you now they would sell thousands and they'd make more and sell them and make more and sell them and they'd make more profit. And they'd also give a bit of faith back to the Liverpool supporters because you think about it, we've had this strip that's come out, this one for next year that's 70 quid. I guarantee they'll bring out an away strip and a European strip, a third strip. So if you wanted all three shirts that on the stands, that would cost you £210. If you wanted the ones they wear on the pitch, that would cost you £300 for three football shirts. I wouldn't pay that for one signed. Oops, sorry. I wouldn't pay that for one signed. £300. I can think of better things to spend my money on. So my gripe and why I said the good and bad of Liverpool is because they are trying literally to get every single penny off people, knowing knowing that we are going through almost a recession at the moment. The cost of living is going up like you would not believe. The cost of fuel is going up and the cost of energy is going up. So what did they do? They put the price of football shirts up. I can understand now why some people buy them knockoff, counterfeit. You know, they'll buy them because as long as they're wearing a Liverpool shirt, they won't be bothered if it's official or not. A lot of people won't. Not if they can save 30, 40 quid. It's disgusting. Anyway, that is my vlog for today. I will do another vlog soon. You all take care and bye for now.